Welcome. Uh, I'm Gideon Rachman, the Chief Foreign Affairs Commentator of the Financial Times, and with me is Tony Barber, our Europe Editor, and we're talking Catalonia after dramatic events this weekend where the Catalans attempted to stage a kind of unofficial independence referendum and were greeted with a, a very fierce reaction from the central government in Madrid involving police action, which leaves open the question of how are these two sides going to reconcile? How is this issue going to be resolved? Do you think that the Catalonian issue, Tony, has kind of gone a bit critical now because of this clashes in the streets? It's uh, particularly difficult to solve because one can't really talk about one united single force on the one hand representing the region of Catalonia and on the other hand one single united force representing uh, the authorities in Madrid within Catalonia society is probably roughly uh, split half and half on the issue of independence and uh, from the point of view of the political classes in Madrid the Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy leads a minority government some of his opponents might see a way of using this crisis to bring him down. So it isn't easy to see negotiations uh, beginning in a really serious way for the moment. Mm. Britain did take a deep breath and allow Scotland an independence referendum. The Spanish have taken a much harder line, say it's illegal, unconstitutional, etc. Why are they being quite this hard line? The plain fact is, of course, that the United Kingdom doesn't have a written constitution spelling out the terms on which any one part of uh, the country uh, can secede. Uh, this was decided at political level. The difference in Spain is that it does have a written constitution, a 1978 constitution, which was approved, by the way, by all people in Spain, including about nine in ten uh, uh, people in Catalonia. And that constitution states that the nation is uh, uh, indissoluble, its unity is indissoluble. In most countries that have written constitutions, mm. uh, the barriers are set high for secession uh, precisely because otherwise you'd see all countries breaking up once every generation or yeah. two. But what about the emotional and political situation? Because obviously the risk of what Madrid uh, did over the weekend is that it radicalizes Catalonia. And you said that uh, opinion polls show Catalans about 50-50 on the independence question. Uh, do you think there's a risk now that positions on both sides harden? It's certainly possible. I think it's a little bit early to judge yet. I mean, don't forget also that positions might harden in the rest of Spanish society, watching what's going on in Catalonia. In a sense, the Catalan separatists uh, got part of what they wanted, at least, by, by in their view, being able to uh, spread images around the world of a very heavy-handed Spanish state uh, insensitive to their demands. Mm. At the same time, the Spanish government uh, was able to disrupt the, the, uh, the referendum. However, I do think that the temperature has risen uh, rather seriously, and uh, it's, it's going to take a, a while for that to, to cool down. Last thing, on the role of the EU, the Catalan government is now calling for the EU to mediate between Spain and Catalonia. Does the EU, which after all is meant to be the guarantor of peace and democracy in Europe, does it have any role in trying to calm this situation down? The Commission, I don't think, does want to get involved. Uh, it doesn't have real teeth to act in a situation like this. It, it, it simply doesn't have the uh, uh, legal or political authority to be a true mediator. As for the uh, national governments, uh, be it Germany, France, Italy, Poland, and so on, um, they've been pretty clear. I mean, they do not want to see one of their fellow states break up. The, the uh, balance of opinion in, uh, among other European governments is very much on the side of uh, Madrid. Tony Barber, thank you very much indeed. We'll leave it here for now. Thank you.